734. She succeeded by saying what everyone else was thinking, and it made her a star. Like her? Yeah. Hate her? It didn't matter. She yeah. just wanted you talking. Comedian Joan Rivers, who is a pioneer for not only women in comedy, but, you know, men as well. With her raspy voice, her sharp tongue, Joan knew all the right things and all the right buttons to be keep pushing. Yeah, throughout her stellar career, Joan worked with many comedians. And joining us this morning are two people who admired her mm -hmm. and worked with her, too. We have comedian Jeffrey Gurian joining us. And also on the phone this morning is a very funny comedian Judy Gold. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. To you. All right, Hi, Judy. Judy. <laughs> I, I want to start Hi. with you. Good morning. I, I want to actually read um, a, a tweet. Yeah. Or actually a statement from Lisa Lampanelli. And I want you to respond to this because she said, without Joan Rivers' groundbreaking comedy, none of the female comedians out here today, myself included, would be where we are. She broke new ground. She was fearless. Absolutely the hardest working woman in show business. Do you agree with that? Does that sound right to you, I Judy? Absolutely, I absolutely agree with that. And I don't think she... Uh, she, al she also affected male comedians because she was an advocate for freedom of speech. She never shied away from the controversial. She said it like it is. She was fearless. She just, you know, she really was the hardest working person. And, you know, the night she got had two gigs booked, and she did them. She yeah. went, got married, and then worked that evening. And... She was an amazing friend, a lady. If you talk to anyone who ever worked with her, they have nothing bad to say. Can nothing. you, Judy, can you, you talked about her, a friend, you know, and you and Jeff know her as friends. Tell me what she was like behind the scenes when you just would have, like, maybe a drink with her or dinner with her. What was she like? What were those moments that you remember and hold dearly? Well, for me, you know, she was always a part of my life because I watched her since I could watch television. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, I would often say to her, Joan, you have no idea. Do you have any clue what you did for us? Mm -hmm. what, and, oh, baloney. Oh, just, <laughs> you're funny. You're funny. Just keep, keep, make sure you produce everything yourself and keep all the money. Like, she, <laughs> she <laughs> feel with the admiration and love. And, but she helped me in so many ways. When my first son was born, but, you know, I come home late from a gig, 12, 1 in the morning, and he wakes up. And I feel like I'm screwing up his sleep. He's tired in the morning. Yeah. He has a snack. He eats late with me. <laughs> and she said, ah, who cares? So he's tired. You know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what time it is when you spend time with your kids. It matters that you spend time with your kids. And I love that. And, and she just was always said the right thing. And I have to say, a lot of people say that they credit her with uh, why they became stand-ups. Yeah. Uh, but I have to tell you, for me personally, yeah, she is the reason I never, ever, ever quit. Wow. That, that's a good point. I mean, she was not a quitter. Yeah. Jeffrey, go ahead. Give us your, your memories of her this morning. The, you know, Joan was one of the most gracious people that I've ever met. Mm -hmm. She's so kind and caring. The last time I saw her, I mean, I got to write for her in the 90s as a result of her seeing me at a friar's roast. I wrote material, and her manager called and asked if I would meet with her to write for her. And it was such an exciting thing, and our paths crossed over the years. I wrote for her for quite a while, but um, I saw her last on June 30th. She came up to Sirius XM where I'm a regular on the show with Ron and Fez. And she was there for an interview, and she was talking about her new book, Diary of a Mad Diva. Yeah. And she was secluded in the green room. Everybody was around her. And they knew that I wanted to see her, so they brought me back. And she was there with Larry Amaros, a dear friend who wrote the book with her. And she gave me the biggest hug. And <laughs> she started asking me questions about my own book. Yeah. I had a recent book. And but in-depth questions. And I said to her, Joan, let me give you a copy. And she said, no, no, no. She goes, no, I want to buy a copy. Don't give me a copy. She goes, I want to support you and the book. That's uh -huh. the kind of gracious person she was. And her assistant oh, took a incredible. picture of my book yeah. so that she could go out and order it. I, I, I want to ask you about the process of writing with Joan Rivers. I mean, a legend. What was it like to write with her? What was that process like? Well, it was so fun, first of all. We used to, you know, she lived near me, so I would bring stuff to her house, and I would drive with her, and we would be doing jokes in the car, and we would be <laughs> rehearsing in her apartment. And it was just, it was one of the most fun times that I ever had, because she is so unlike her stage persona. 
Yeah. I can't tell you how gracious and kind the person and how supportive she was. In the 90s, she sent me this picture as a thank you, and she wrote on it. I guess I'm supposed to hold yeah, it this way. Yeah, just right there, right there. That's perfect. And she wrote it. To Jeff, you're so talented. Good luck, Joan Rivers. You know what that meant to me as a young writer at the time? I was so in awe of her. And I'll say this now. I always had a crush on Joan Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> That's I all right. Admit I it. thought she was beautiful. Yeah. And still, Joan Rivers was hip. She yeah. may have been 81 years old, but she was so hip and Are so relevant. So but relevant. You know, it, it, Go ahead, Judy. So, so, it's so sad that she didn't think she was beautiful like that was her one insecurity mm -hmm. was thinking you had to be beautiful to be successful in this business and I think if she had no plastic surgery it didn't matter because she was the real thing yeah. she was a flawless stroke writer she never stopped she never stopped working mm -hmm. she didn't care how many people were in the audience or how crappy the room looked <laughs> she did the show no matter what no. She was beautiful. I see, even in this picture I, I of her from years ago, I always thought she was beautiful, and so did many people. And she had style. She had flair. Oh, style! The, she was flair. a lady. At the Just for Laughs festival last summer, not this past summer, but the one before, she hosted a gala, and she wore a feathered outfit, like a cape, like so regal, like a queen. Yeah. And she was just surrounded by people who loved her all the time. And yeah. I, you know what? Yeah. She's been on the show so many times, and you, both of you are right. She's a lady. She's a class yeah. act. She was unstoppable. So much so. She redefined and defined, and then redefined. <laughs> find again for oh, till 20 till, till her last dying day really yeah. seriously I thank you no, Judy I, thank oh, you we're done. okay you were the I'm sorry uh, but you oh, know it's fine I could go on and on and on thank you <laughs> so much. Yeah, but Judy, thank you me. so Yeah, I know. You, you're the best, Judy, and I, I know you loved her so much, and you know what? Our heartfelt condolences to you mm -hmm. and to Jeff, because, you know, you, you both shared a special bond with her, and thank you for sharing your stories with our, our morning viewers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yeah, time right now, 742.